Hello, truth seekers, and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. All righty now, folks, it's your favorite neighborhood critic here, coming at you with some piping hot tea about the latest Royal Rumble. Grab your popcorn because this one's a doozy. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on, guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now, Mike Tyndall, rugby legend and all-around stand-up guy, just dropped his new book. And let me tell you, he did not hold back. Our boy Mike went full beast mode on none other than Meghan Markle's personal lapdog, Omid Scobie. Oh, the drama. Now, before we dive into this juicy mess, let's set the scene. We all know and love Mike Tyndall, right? Married to the amazing Zara Phillips, part of our cherished royal family, and just an absolute gem of a human being. And then we have Omid Scobie. Ugh, where do I even begin with this guy? Scobie, for those of you lucky enough to not know who he is, is basically Meghan Markle's unofficial mouthpiece. You know, that guy who's always ready to sing her praises and trash the rest of the royal family at a moment's notice. Well, folks, it looks like Mike Tyndall has had enough of his nonsense, and boy, did he let him have it. In his new book, Mike didn't just throw shade at Scobie. He straight up called him and his ex, formerly Twitter followers, rotten nuts. Can I get an amen up in here? Finally, someone had the guts to say what we've all been thinking. Now, let's break this down, shall we, Mike wrote, and I quote, I don't even have access to my Twitter. I just get tagged in by anyone who's talking about anything. It's so random what I have to sift through. Okay, pause for a second. Can we just appreciate how down to earth Mike is? The man doesn't even manage his own social media, probably because he's too busy being an awesome dad and husband. Unlike some people we know who shall remain nameless, cough Megan cough, Mike's not obsessed with his public image or constantly seeking the spotlight. But wait, it gets better. Mike goes on to say, if there's any story about me or my kids, it will get entangled into a web of something else. And I'm tagged into reading all this crap. That's the world we live in. Some have got nothing better to do than bag people. Preach, Mike, preach. This right here is why we love him. He's calling out all the trolls and haters who spend their days stirring up drama and spreading lies about the royal family. And let's be real, we all know who's behind most of that garbage, don't we? That's right, I'm looking at you, Meghan Markle, our favorite Z-list actress turned royal troublemaker. The puppet master pulling Scobie's strings and causing chaos wherever she goes. Can you imagine the meltdown she must be having right now? Her precious little lapdog, Omid, just got put in his place by Mike freaking Tyndall. I can just picture it now. Megan pacing around her Montecito mansion, screaming into her phone. Omid, how could you let this happen? I thought I told you to trash the royals, not get trashed by them. And poor little Omid, probably cowering in a corner somewhere, stammering out excuses and promises to do better next time. But here's the thing, folks. There might not be a next time for old Scooby. Mike Tyndall just showed the world that the royal family isn't going to sit back and take this nonsense anymore. They're fighting back and they're doing it with class and dignity. Speaking of class and dignity, can we talk about how Mike defended the royal family in his book? He said, believe it or not, marrying into the royal family was pretty easy for me. They were always nice to me and I was always nice to them. Simple, really. Now, compare that to the constant whining and complaining we hear from Harry and Meghan. It's like night and day, isn't it? Mike and Zara have seamlessly integrated into the royal family, raised their beautiful children, and contributed positively to the monarchy's image. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan have done nothing but cause drama, stir up controversy, and try to tear down the very institution that gave them their platform. It's honestly heartbreaking to see what's become of Prince Harry. Remember when he used to be the fun-loving, charming prince we all adored? Now he's just, well, a lapdog. Meghan's lapdog, to be precise. It's like she's cast some kind of spell on him, turning him against his own family and everything he once held. 
dear. But let's get back to Mike and his epic takedown of Scobie. You know what I love about this? It's not just Mike defending himself or his immediate family. He's standing up for all of the royals, including William and Kate. And we all know how close the Tyndalls are with the Prince and Princess of Wales. Can you imagine the group chat between Mike, Zara, William and Kate right now? I bet they're all having a good laugh about this, maybe sharing some cheeky memes about Scobie's rotten nuts comment. It's moments like these that remind us why we love the royal family so much. They're real people with real relationships, not just figureheads. Now, I know some people might say, uh, oh, but isn't Mike stooping to their level by calling them names? To those people, I say absolutely not. There's a world of difference between standing up for yourself and your family and constantly attacking others for personal gain. Mike isn't out here writing tell-all books about family secrets or giving explosive interviews to Oprah. He's simply defending himself and his loved ones from the constant barrage of nonsense coming from the Sussex camp. And let's be real, Rotten Nuts is pretty tame compared to some of the things Meghan and her cronies have insinuated about the royal family. Remember all those vague accusations of racism? The claims about how terribly they were treated? At least Mike is being direct and honest about his feelings, not hiding behind unnamed sources or friends close to the couple. But you know what really gets me? The fact that Meghan and Harry, through their mouthpieces like Scobie, keep trying to paint themselves as victims. It's always poor us, look how badly we're treated. Meanwhile, they're living in a multi-million dollar mansion in California, signing lucrative deals with Netflix and Spotify, and constantly seeking the spotlight they claim to hate so much. It's like make up your minds already. Do you want privacy, or do you want to be the center of attention? Because from where I'm sitting, it looks like they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want all the perks of royal life without any of the responsibilities or scrutiny that come with it. And don't even get me started on their hypocrisy when it comes to environmental issues. Remember when they were jetting around in private planes while lecturing the rest of us about our carbon footprints? Or how about their water usage during California's drought? It's like they think the rules don't apply to them because they're so special. But you know who doesn't act like that? Mike and Zara Tyndall. They've managed to balance their royal duties with their personal lives without constantly seeking attention or causing drama. They show up, do their jobs, and then go home to their kids. No fuss, no muss. That's what real class looks like, folks. And speaking of kids, can we take a moment to appreciate how Mike and Zara are raising their children? Mia, Lena, and Lucas seem like such well-adjusted, happy kids. They're often seen at royal events, behaving beautifully and clearly enjoying themselves. Compare that to the Sussex children, who we hardly ever see. It's like Meghan and Harry are using them as props, only trotting them out when it suits their agenda. It's just so refreshing to see royals like Mike and Zara, who understand what it means to be part of the monarchy. They're not in it for personal gain or to push their own agendas. They're there to support the institution, to represent their country, and to carry on the legacy of service that Queen Elizabeth II embodied so beautifully. And let's not forget how Mike and Zara handled the passing of the Queen. They were there, supporting the family, paying their respects, and honoring her memory. No drama, no attention-seeking behavior, just genuine grief and respect. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan managed to turn even that solemn occasion into a circus with all their will-they-won't-they -they drama about attending the funeral. It's moments like these that really highlight the difference between those who understand the importance of duty and those who are only interested in themselves. Mike and Zara get it. William and Kate get it. But Harry and Meghan, they're too busy playing the victim and trying to rewrite history to see the bigger picture. And don't even get me started on Meghan's acting career or lack thereof. Let's be real, if it wasn't for marrying Harry, would any of us even know who she was? She was a C-list actress at best, and now she's trying to position herself as some kind of global humanitarian and influencer. Girl, please, we see right through you, because they're so special. But you know who doesn't act like that? Mike and Zara Tyndall. They've managed to balance their royal duties with their personal lives without constantly seeking attention or causing drama. They show up, do their jobs, 
and then go home to their kids. No fuss, no muss. That's what real class looks like, folks. And speaking of kids, can we take a moment to appreciate how Mike and Zara are raising their children? Mia, Lena and Lucas seem like such well-adjusted, happy kids. They're often seen at royal events behaving beautifully and clearly enjoying themselves. Compare that to the Sussex children who we hardly ever see. It's like Meghan and Harry are using them as props, only trotting them out when it suits their agenda. It's just so refreshing to see royals like Mike and Zara who understand what it means to be part of the monarchy. They're not in it for personal gain or to push their own agendas. They're there to support the institution, to represent their country, and to carry on the legacy of service that Queen Elizabeth Vid embodied so beautifully. And let's not forget how Mike and Zara handled the passing of the Queen. They were there, supporting the family, paying their respects, and honoring her memory. No drama, no attention-seeking behavior, just genuine grief and respect. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan managed to turn even that solemn occasion into a circus with all their will-they-won't-they -they drama about attending the funeral. It's moments like these that really highlight the difference between those who understand the importance of duty and those who are only interested in themselves. Mike and Zara get it. William and Kate get it. But Harry and Meghan, they're too busy playing the victim and trying to rewrite history to see the bigger picture. And don't even get me started on Meghan's acting career, or lack thereof. Let's be real. If it wasn't for marrying Harry, would any of us even know who she was. She was a C-list actress at best, and now she's trying to position herself as some kind of global humanitarian and influencer. Girl, please, we see right through you. But back to Mike's book, I love how he's not afraid to call out the toxic culture of social media. When he talks about getting tagged in random posts and having to sift through all the crap, it really highlights how difficult it must be for public figures to deal with the constant scrutiny and criticism. And yet, he handles it with such grace and humor. Take notes, Sussex squad. You know, it's interesting to think about how different things could have been if Harry had married someone more like Zara, someone who understood the royal family and was willing to work within the system rather than trying to tear it down. Imagine if he'd found a partner who supported him in his royal duties instead of encouraging him to abandon them. We might still have our fun-loving, charitable Prince Harry instead of whatever he's become now. But no, instead we got Meghan, the woman who thought she could waltz in and modernize a thousand-year-old institution overnight. The woman who couldn't handle not being the center of attention for five minutes. The woman who, let's be honest, probably saw Harry as her ticket to worldwide fame, rather than as a partner to love and support. And now look where we are. Harry's relationship with his family is in tatters. He's isolated from his friends, his country, and the life he once knew, all because he fell for Meghan's manipulations and bought into her us against the world narrative. It's actually quite sad when you think about it. Harry used to be so close with William and Kate, Remember all those adorable moments of Uncle Harry with little George and Charlotte? Now his own children barely know their cousins, all because Meghan couldn't stand the fact that she wasn't the star of the show. But you know what? As much as it pains me to see what's happened to Harry, I'm glad the rest of the royal family is standing strong. William and Kate have really stepped up, haven't they? They're the perfect example of how to be modern royals while still respecting tradition and duty. And now we have Mike Tyndall joining the fray, defending the family in his own straightforward, no-nonsense way. I think that's what I love most about Mike's book. It's honest. It's not some carefully crafted PR piece or a revenge tell-all. It's just Mike being Mike, telling it like it is. And in doing so, he's given us a glimpse into what the royal family is really like behind closed doors. Spoiler alert. They're normal people who care about each other and try to do their best in extraordinary circumstances. Can you imagine Meghan writing a book like that? It would probably be 500 pages of self-aggrandizement and thinly veiled attacks on the royal family. Actually, isn't that basically what Finding Freedom was? You know, that book that Meghan and Harry totally didn't cooperate with. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But here's the thing. 
Books like Finding Freedom and all of Scobie's little hit pieces, they're not going to age well. In a few years, people are going to look back and see them for what they are, desperate attempts to control the narrative and stay relevant. Meanwhile, honest accounts like Mike's will stand the test of time because they're rooted in truth and genuine experience. I and let's talk about relevance for a second, shall we? Because it seems like Harry and Meghan are struggling with that lately. Their Netflix show was a flop, their Spotify deal went up in flames, and now what? They're running out of royal secrets to spill and family members to throw under the bus. Maybe that's why Meghan's supposedly planning a return to acting, because all their other ventures have failed spectacularly. But you know who doesn't have to worry about staying relevant? The working royals, William and Kate, Princess Anne, Mike and Zara. They're out there every day doing the work, supporting charities, representing the crown. They don't need to chase headlines or manufacture drama because their actions speak for themselves. And that's really the crux of it, isn't it? The difference between those who understand what it means to be royal and those who see it as a path to celebrity. Mike Tyndall gets it. He knows that being part of the royal family is a privilege and a responsibility, not a launching pad for personal brand building. That's why his comments about Scobie and the online trolls are so powerful. He's not just defending himself, he's standing up for the entire institution of the monarchy. He's saying, enough is enough. We're not going to sit back and let you spread lies and cause drama anymore. And you know what? I think the British public is behind him 100%. We're tired of the constant attacks on our beloved royal family. We're sick of the Sussex drama and their never-ending victim narrative. We want to see our royals doing what they do best, representing our country with dignity and grace, supporting worthy causes, and yes, occasionally dropping truth bombs on those who deserve it. So here's to Mike Tyndall, the unexpected hero we didn't know we needed. Here's to his honesty, his loyalty, and his willingness to call out the rotten nuts for what they are. And here's to the hope that maybe, just maybe, this will be the wake-up call that Harry needs to finally see the light and come back to his senses. Until then, my fellow royal watchers, keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your skepticism firmly in place. Because in the world of royal watching, the truth is often stranger than fiction. And the fiction is pretty darn strange to begin with, Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.